In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about colligative properties here with regard to freezing point and boiling point. Let's see what it says here at the top of the screen. Adding a non-volatile solute to a solvent decreases the solution's freezing point and increases its boiling point. We're going to add a non-volatile solute, like salt, to some solvent, let's say water. Let's show you, using a phase diagram, how we can visualize what's happening here. This phase diagram, first of all, clearly it is not the phase diagram of water because the solid liquid line, which you can see right here, which seems in this diagram to point kind of in the one o'clock direction, if this were the phase diagram of water, that line would be pointing more towards 11 o'clock. In other words, it would lean to the left in any case. What we have on this diagram, at one atmosphere of pressure between the solid and the liquid phase, this temperature that goes right down there, that is called the normal freezing point, the temperature at which it freezes when there's one atmosphere of pressure, also the normal melting point, you could call it. Similarly, between the liquid and gas phases, at one atmosphere of pressure, we have the normal boiling point. Again, normal refers to a confining pressure of one atmosphere. If we turn this solvent into a solution by adding something like salt or sugar to it, the phase diagram changes a bit. The solid liquid line moves to the left, and the liquid gas line moves down a bit, so that we have, as you can see here, the boiling point ends up increasing, and the freezing point ends up decreasing. And this occurs for any non-volatile solute that we add to a solvent. The boiling point will get higher. The freezing point will drop. The freezing point depression and boiling point elevation are given by this equation, which we're not going to use in this lesson. We'll use it in a later lesson. What it says is the change in temperature is equal to some constant times the molality times this I, which is called the Vantoff factor. Delta T is the amount by which the freezing point decreases, or the number of degrees by which the boiling point increases. K is a constant, and in the case of freezing point depression, it's usually found in references as K sub F, and for boiling point elevation, it's usually found in references as K sub B. The K values depend on the solvent, and for water, I would say there is no need to memorize these numbers, but here they are for water. And M is the molality of the solution. I, as I mentioned on the previous slide, is called the Vantoff factor, and it accounts for the number of particles in a solution. In aqueous solution, for this introductory treatment, we're going to assume that I is 1 for non-electrolytes. In other words, each non-electrolytic particle remains as a unified whole, and it does not break into pieces. You can see that the next line, potassium bromide, sodium chloride, you can see that when you would put those into aqueous solution, they would break into two particles, a K plus and a Br minus, or an Na plus and a Cl minus, so the Vantoff factor is two. Next one, calcium chloride, you can see that it would break into three ions, a Ca2 plus ion and two Cl1 minus ions. So that's how you figure out the Vantoff factor. In reality, the Vantoff factor isn't always an integer. Use these guidelines that I've provided unless we're given other information. Let's review this conceptual treatment of boiling point elevation and freezing point depression. On the left, we have essentially a temperature scale. And for pure water, we should really know that the normal freezing point is 0 degrees Celsius, and the normal boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. In other words, there is a certain range of liquidiness. Water is a liquid between 0 and 100 degrees Celsius. If, now, we change that water into a solution, in other words, we put some solute in, like salt or sugar, the freezing point drops. It's lower than 0 degrees Celsius. The boiling point 
rises. It's higher than 100 degrees Celsius. As you can see in the lower right corner, the solution won't freeze until a colder than the normal freezing point temperature is reached. And in the upper right, the solution won't boil until a hotter than the normal boiling point temperature is reached.